Gula. Minya Nura Wobblin. Nura Eagle Marawai. Ni Yigu Marawai Baragu. Ye Gatun Guba Barai. Ye Natu Barai. Ye Yam Ye Nuran Marmu. This really is about revival of cultural practice, specifically the practice of burning country, as our old people, as the, our ancestors did for thousands of years. Today is just about one more step in that direction of revival, and I see my role as um, assisting that process and helping the, with the revival of, of cultural burning. It's wonderful to see a group of Aboriginal people who are uh, working in the space of environmental management as rangers. Um, as I pointed out to them today, this, this was, I guess, another work day, but it, it wasn't work. It was them undertaking their cultural practices. So for me, that's probably the most important aspect, other than the benefits that it has for country, it's the benefits that it has for, for people. It's Karaka Bark. It's a, it's, a, it's a site name in the Gathung language. Not Karaka because they had no C or K, but they had a G. Garaka, Mouth. Bark is a place. And it alludes to um, a mouth opening up onto a valley. We're at Karaka Bark uh, in a pretty special place. Um, delivering this cultural burn today. It's a very unique uh, property. And it's situated between two national parks that were impacted by bushfires in 2019-20 blackfires. And it's also very unique because it's uh, a habitat for uh, the brush-tailed rock wallaby and the only population which is in our mid-coast region. And this private property in particular is a, a bit of a refuge habitat where it wasn't impacted by fires. And this new landholder is looking to regenerate the property um, with the biodiversity values at the forefront. Cultural burning uh, training program goes for three years. It's in partnership with Fire Sticks and is um, run by Victor Stephenson. Uh, there are 44 students in the Hunter region that are involved in the, in the course. Today this burn's being um, well, assisted by the Tide Rangers who are part of the course and in a year from now we'll be fully fledged fire practitioners. The values of this program are indescribable. I mean we're learning ancient knowledge and, and land management techniques and after 200 and something years it's now being brought back to country. Uh, we had our Black Summer Fires which was a pretty polarising event um, so I think following that uh, government departments have really looked at their fire regimes and seen what we can learn from traditional owners. Nobody knows this country better. It's about supporting traditional owners to, to take lead in these burns and really letting them restore their own cultural knowledge as well as bring it back to country. Now I'm thrilled uh, that I can contribute to this uh, cultural burning training with the traditional owners of the land because I strongly believe that when we try to give this land back uh, to nature, we need to use some uh, traditional nature-related practices. The purpose of this today, making sure that these practices is preserved and the future gener generation can contribute to cultural burning uh, practices. Cobra, the Kurika Bark Open Air Biodiversity Restoration Laboratory is open for cultural burning training and hopefully the next generation 
uh, we'll take this further and uh, people are going to pick up this uh, uh, individual effort and collaborate further and make the practice work uh, further in, around the area and the state and well beyond. As we move forward, uh, we're trying to bring back as much traditional knowledge as we can and obviously traditional owners, they were um, the first ecologists and botanists in our country and bringing back that knowledge to the country uh, is, is really important uh, for those that are trying to manage their land in a, in a more naturalised, uh, regenerative way.